it actually has antioxidant capabilities inside our muscle, which means that it could be combating free radicals that would normally damage the mitochondria. Remember, we want our mitochondria to be functional, not dysfunctional. Our bodies are dynamic, our needs change, our needs for specific minerals and nutrients change as we get older. Okay? Accepting that is a big part of maturity. Okay? What you need when you're in your 20s, when you're super active and your muscles are contracting in slightly different ways is totally different from your 30s, and that's even different from your 40s. And then it gets extremely different in your 50s as you start to go through a little bit more of uh, mitochondrial shift. Okay, we'll talk about that, and I'll keep this all fairly high level, but I wanna talk about three minerals that I personally feel people over 50 years old should be getting in their diet, and quite frankly, probably should be supplementing. So we'll touch on them, we'll explain why they're beneficial, we'll talk about muscle mass, we'll talk about bones, we'll talk about brain, it'll be a good video. But before we get into everything, I wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button so you subscribe to this channel, and then I wanna make sure you hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. And after this video, there's a link down below in the description to check out Jito Matcha. Okay, matcha tea is awesome at any age. Very clean form of green tea that comes from baby tea leaves, baby green tea leaves that are grown in the shade. So they had a lot of the chlorophyll, they have all the nutrients that you would really like, but they're also just very clean and pure. And Hujido is a 180 year old matcha company. They're, in my opinion, like the original matcha company. So very, very cool if you're into matcha green tea. So highly recommend you check them out. Special link down below in the description. Check them out after this video. Okay, this video is for informational purposes only. I'm not a doctor, I'm just some guy on the internet that lost 100 pounds and knows a tad bit of biochemistry. But with that being said, eh, I do a little bit of research. So let's break this down. The first thing that's not going to be on this list that I have to get out in the open is calcium. I will honestly say if you're taking a calcium supplement unless you feel like it's absolutely required by a medical professional, you should probably stop. Okay, there was a study that was published in the Journal of the American Heart Association, big study, took a look at over 5,000 people that found that there was a significant increase in the risk of coronary artery calcification in those that took calcium supplements. Okay, we don't need to be taking in extra calcium. We get enough from our diet, even if you're not consuming a bunch of dairy. Okay, you are probably getting more than enough calcium. It more so comes down to, with vitamin D, vitamin K2, and getting those things into the right place but that's a different video. The first mineral I definitely think you should be adding into the mix is magnesium. 60% of the magnesium is stored in our bones. So if you're over 50, that means that that magnesium is getting used to strengthen bones, which is great. But if that's the case, it means that you can become deficient in magnesium in other areas. Remember, magnesium is required for over 300 different enzymatic processes in the body. That means making energy, supporting your hair, supporting your brain. It's all requiring magnesium. And if your magnesium levels are low because your body is having to use it to prioritize bone strength, then you run into that issue there. The funny thing is, is that magnesium is equally as important as calcium when it comes down to osteoporosis. So get magnesium in. That's the one that we're typically deficient in, not so much calcium. Okay, now let's talk muscle for a second. Now, not just talking muscle from the side of wasting away and losing muscle, but also peck. You're over 50, you wanna maintain your muscle, you wanna build some muscle, you still wanna look good, you still wanna feel good, you still wanna play the field, right? So let's go ahead and let's talk about how you can still look good with this. There was one study that took a look at 740 participants and they found there is a very clear correlation with magnesium levels and muscle mass. Those that had lower levels of magnesium ended up going through sarcopenia and losing muscle much faster than those that had sufficient magnesium. So yes, definitely wanna be taking in some magnesium. Now, why is this happening? I'm a biochemistry nerd and I like to explain it so that people get it, right? The mitochondria, the energy powerhouse, what's allowing us to create energy in the muscle as we get older becomes a little bit more dysfunctional, okay? Dysfunctional mitochondria just means that as we get older, the mitochondria gets weaker and stranger and then when it goes through its biogenesis and gives birth to other mitochondria and spreads and whatever, well, then it has its own DNA so it creates more kind of weak, weird, decrepit mitochondria. This means you lose muscular function, but magnesium can help support that because it helps your body create energy, helps the mitochondria function. So anyhow, that's what it has to do with muscle mass. Then what about sleep and recovery? Okay, we cannot deny the fact that magnesium plays a big role in sleep. There was one study that showed that just 500 milligrams of magnesium for eight weeks significantly improved sleep scores in those that were over 60 years old. Now, we know that sleep's important for recovery. So if you're over 50, over 60, 70, whatever, that's very, very important. Anyhow, let's move into the next mineral, which is zinc. 
Now, zinc plays a very big role when it comes down to muscle as well. Okay, we have to remember zinc's role in testosterone production. Whether you're a man or a woman, this is going to be important for you because a little bit of testosterone is still what helps support that muscle mass. And it's been shown that zinc is an indicator of our muscle mass. So low levels of zinc seem to indicate higher levels of sarcopenia. Okay, why is this happening? Well, it's theorized that it has to do with the antioxidant capabilities of zinc. We see zinc as a mineral, which has to do with our electrical system and stuff like that, but it actually has antioxidant capabilities inside our muscle, which means that it could be combating free radicals that would normally damage the mitochondria. Remember, we want our mitochondria to be functional, not dysfunctional. So if zinc can come in and act as sort of a barrier, as sort of a soldier to help protect that mitochondria, then the mitochondria doesn't become as weak as fast, therefore allowing the muscle to still contract at its maximum force and allows you to maintain muscle and ultimately have better metabolism. One of the things that I stress so much is that muscle is not just a vanity play. Muscle is a secretary organ, which means that it secretes hormones. It means that it has signaling effects within the body. Okay, we're finding now in science that muscle has a lot of properties with just overall health. So the more muscle you have, generally the healthier you are because you have more mitochondria there, you have more just general health. Now, more muscle also means more risk for that mitochondria to go bad, so you just wanna make sure you support it. So anyhow, I know I'm talking a lot about muscle, but trust me, it's playing a big role in your overall health. Now here's what's wild though. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that zinc played a big role in cognitive health too. Okay, when it has to do with like your overall memory, your spatial memory, your uh, cognitive function in general. Turns out in a study that took a look at 240 individuals, there was a relationship once again with zinc and memory. And it has to do with the fact that zinc is stored in the cerebral cortex portion of your brain. That has a lot to do with your memory and your overall working memory. So if zinc levels are high and that cerebral cortex has higher levels of zinc, then you might very well end up having an improvement in your memory, at least as this study indicated. There's of course the argument talking about zinc and the immune system and everything like that, but that's valid for any age group. So I'm not gonna focus on it too much here. Now the next one is chromium. You watch my channel, you probably know I talk about chromium as something that you can take surrounding a cheap meal to help your body utilize glucose. That is always good. Okay? Anytime that we can help our body utilize carbohydrates better, it's a good thing. We don't want rogue excess carbohydrates floating through the bloodstream. That's never really a good thing. We want our cells to optimally be using what we take in, and chromium can help with that by increasing the GLUT4 transporter, helping the chromium or helping the glucose get into the cell. Now, interestingly enough, there's science now that shows that chromium can help brain function in those that are over 50. There was a study that was published in Nutritional Neuroscience that showed that chromium helped improve what is called brain insulin resistance. Remember, our brain utilizes glucose, just like other cells in our body. So our brain can become insulin resistant and it could actually become more insulin resistant than the peripheral tissues in the rest of our body. So if we can improve that specifically, that's kind of a cool thing more glucose getting properly utilized within the brain can mean a better brain, better function of the brain. So if you're insulin resistant in the brain, that means the brain cells aren't really using glucose well and you're just ending up glucose intolerant and basically ending up feeling foggy. This circles us right back to mitochondrial dysfunction once again. Okay, the mitochondrial dysfunction I talked about in the muscles is gonna play a big role in the brain too. So long story short, chromium is gonna help you out at the muscular level, it's gonna help you out in terms of absorbing your carbohydrates, and it's gonna help you out in terms of utilizing fuel in your brain better. The last thing I'm just gonna to touch on as sort of an honorable mention is potassium. Potassium is important for everyone, but I'm a firm believer that as we get a little bit older, we become a little less efficient at utilizing our minerals properly. Potassium is important for regulating that fluid balance in the cell. I don't want you to end up consuming sodium and dealing with some kind of hypertensive issue and stuff like that. So if we bring potassium into the mix, it does help at least balance the sodium. I don't believe in reducing sodium drastically unless you have a medical condition. I think that sodium plays an important role. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm just some dude on the internet. But if we balance it with potassium, at least we have the mineral balance that the osmotic relationship that we need to keep the body healthy. So just to recap, we've got magnesium, zinc, chromium, and potassium. The go-to minerals if you're over 50. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.